America imagine? What if white people were slaves? What if slavery, the lynching, civil rights issues, the social neglect, the undeniable abuses were somehow against a minority of white people instead of everyone else? What if our history was theirs? Which would also mean that our traumas and our fears were adopted by them as well. Just imagine for a second if white people would have been slaves. You see, it doesn't matter if you're white or black. No one will ever be able to understand your pain, your fears, your neglect, all the lopsided life you live, unless they're able to somehow walk in your shoes. What if white people were slaves doesn't just flip the roles, it paints a picture where white people and black people alike are given an opportunity to feel how it is to be the other. This is our America. So if you truly want to understand, I dare you to read What If White People Were Slaves. It's Good Morning Black People with your host, Morgan Reese. Author, author, podcast, 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 online personality. Good Morning Black People discussing social views, today's news, and interviews. Subscribe today at YouTube at Good Morning Black People. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Good Morning Black People, Morgan Reese, and I am your fantastic host, Morgan Reese. I have an awesome, exclusive interview today, guys. Tonight, this morning, every time you're watching this, I have the one and only Lester Sir Pace, what you used to be called from once upon a time back in the day. Uh, Lester Pace is the founder and CEO of Setting the Pace Promotions, along with now being Rock Nation's newest CSVP of promotions. A ma amazing tidbit, his last name describes his career and resume in a nutshell. Positive attitude changes everything. I believe this should be a motto for all things life. Lester enjoyed sponsoring and party promotions. He began his extensive career as a 19-year-old intern of KTSU 90.9 in Houston. In 1991, he became an on-air DJ and radio personality of KBXX 97.9. Later, Lester was appointed in the Southwest Promotions Manager for Rap A Lot Records, then on to Miss South Regional Manor Manager for Endoscope Records. And as DJ on air as an air radio personality at KBXX 97.9. Later, Lester was appointed in the Southwest Promotions for Rapper Lot Records, then on to Mid South Regional for Interscope Records. Lester has been influential as Asset, who has helped move forward amazing artists such as Ghetto Boys, Scarface, Young Jeezy, and Yo Gotti. Now with his impeccable work in the music industry, industry, Lester is the major manager of a newest a phenomenon, Jay Howell. While working at Rock Nation and with his new artists, along with many other projects, Lester took out the time to still manage to take out the time to come on my show to celebrate hip hop's 50th and my 50th birthday. After my intro, please join me in welcoming this once of a lifetime interview with my inspiring guest, Lester Pace. How you doing? I am great. Again, welcome to my show, everyone. This is Good Morning Black People with Morgan Reese. I'm your fantastic, amazing host, Morgan Reese, and I have my exclusive interview with the one and only, the humble Lester Pace. Lester, I would like to say thank you again for taking out the time out of your busy schedule to come and be on my show. <laughs> thank you, Morgan. I'm glad to be here. Um, um, I know we've been uh, doing a lot of things behind the scenes to make this happen, so the fact that we're able to make it happen, I'm glad I could be here and, um, and converse with you. I appreciate that. It's nothing but God's grace. I am so grateful for you taking out the time. I know you're a really busy man, so we're going to try to not still keep you too long because I know you're busy right now. Yeah, so no, we're going to talk about yeah. hip-hop. We're about to jump in this right now because, you okay. know, I can't believe I'm about to be the same age as hip-hop. <laughs> I know 
back in originally hip hop started in 1970, but no one didn't really recognize it until 73 when uh, the one and only DJ Cool Herc just got it nominated to the uh, inducted to the Rock and Hall Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How did you get into that mix and put yourself in there? Because I don't know much about Houston. All I know is New York and Philly. So how did how did Houston come in into all that little bag that you created? We got in the game. I was in high school. I finished in 1983, but in um, around 1980, 81, me and a couple of friends of mine, we got into hip hop and we started rapping, called ourselves the, uh, a friend of mine by the name of Anthony Watson and Melvin D. Why started a group, we each called ourselves the CC Gang. And so we started rapping in some of the uh, school talent shows. So I used to sit at home back in the day and listen to, uh, if you want to see Jimmy Spicer, uh, uh, Sugar Hill Gang and all them. And then um, I used to, uh, I used to, uh, 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 you know, just rap those lyrics, and then I, we started doing our own thing. So at that time in high school, I played football. But on the uh, uh, when I left, got to play football, I worked at McDonald's. And so when I worked at McDonald's. I used to play on the drive-through, and I used to use my DJ voice. You know how back then, how they used to talk, Lester Pace live. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to use that radio voice, and so what happened? Uh, um, I, they had me start doing the morning announcements at the school in high school. And so one of the ladies at the school asked me if I ever thought about being a professional disc jockey. And uh, she turned me on to uh, this lady, uh, Pam Collins, at the uh, radio station KTSU. So uh, they had a show that they had called Kids Jam. And what happened every Saturday, they allowed, it was high school, just kids running the radio stations from Saturdays from 10 to 2. So I started going up there every Saturday at 10 to 2. And we kind of, you know, Pam was teaching us uh, how to be disc jockeys. We ran the board, played the music and everything. So for about four to five months, I would go up there. But at that time, they were only playing R&B music. They weren't playing, no hip hop music. We were just Stephen Bannachar, Ray Parker right. Jr. and all that kind of stuff. So right, right. <laughs> the guy who normally DJed, everybody was out at a parade that TSU was having. And so at that time, I was the only jock there. So. I used to always bring my 40 or 50 records, never got a chance to play them because they was all hip hop. So I, I put the record on the radio and I kept playing hip hop and then the program director, and most people know they have a little bat phone or a red phone started flashing. I pick it up and Pam told me, Lester, take that mess off. So I, <laughs> That's like the old school for now. <laughs> R&B stuff, and then all of a sudden I slip another rap record and then another one, and then she'll call again, and tell me to quit playing. So each week that went on. So finally, it's a young lady by the name of Tammy McCall. Matter of fact, she works with Stevie Wonder Radio Station right now, uh, who was on the show with us at the time. Tammy would uh, uh, had a show called Be Yourself during the Kids Jam segment. So during that segment from twelve to one, they would talk about problems that kids were having. So it was like a a, a talk segment. So. Finally, one Saturday, Pam said she'll let us go on the radio and ask the people whether they want to hear more R&B or hip hop. So we took the votes from 12 to one, and hip hop won. <laughs> water. And so and she said, let's do your thing. And I just went crazy on the radio. So Kids Jam became a state, uh, a staple in the Houston community because people would get up on Saturday mornings from 10 to two and record us and play all those music. And it broke a lot of, uh, Matter of fact, uh, Scarface got his career started there. Uh, UGK, uh, a lot of the big name artists that came out of Houston, that's when they first got their music played. Matter of fact, we did a 50, uh, not a 50, we did a reunion last year. And uh, Scarface, Bun B, a lot of the local Houston acts came and, um, for the show. So we now we're going to do it every year uh, uh, for that. So it was that point that all the music that we got, Run DMC came back by the day because that was the only time that you ever had a chance uh, uh houdini that's the only chance that you had a chance to really get your music played and a g funny thing about there uh i used to leave from the radio station go to this place called sound waves and at that time there's a guy by the name of carlos and also dj premier who worked at that DJ wow at that, at that at that record store and, I, and me and premier went to college together at prairie view i used to dj at that time premier was premier his family stayed there and he he, he wasn't doing all the things he knew to do back then. So it, it, so it has a lot of people, mm. a bit, you know, a lot of history that came through there from, from that side. So that's how I started. And uh, and, and, and I, I, I will always put that staple that hip hop 
started uh, right there at KTSU for his radio is concerned. Mm, wow. And here we thought as New York as us Yankees thought, oh, yeah, it started in New York, Brooklyn, you know. We was doing our thing. No, no. New York started. We just started. We, we followed everything in New York. Got it, got it. Yeah. Uh, every Saturday, I, I would always go to the record stores to buy music, and I would anything that came that had Tommy Boy, uh, uh, Profile Records. I didn't care what it was. I just wanted those records because back then they wouldn't even play the records. Well, you just had to look at the covers. You know by the name and everything like that. Right, right, right. Do we even have, do we even have records anymore? Because I I went to the record store and I have not seen any more records. And I'm like, you know, do we even do that anymore besides in the club? Vinyl is coming back more for. Okay. Uh, people are buying it as a collector's items and stuff like, mm -hmm. uh, um, like even with uh, a lot of artists now, they're, they're pressing the vinyl up. And then if you go to their websites or wherever they sell their merchandise, you probably can pick up a lot of that, uh, th those things. Because people don't even like to play it; they like to hold on it just as a collector's item. Right. But right. you want? I'm, I'm gonna tell you this little tidbit. I actually had a set of records and um, from a previous chapter, and because I was upset with doing that previous chapter, I tossed it. <laughs> So you, I lost just, it. you just threw the money out the window. I did. I did. I did. Last time. I was like, uh, that'd be all right. It, they don't need them anyway. I'll pay for them anyway. So don't even matter. <laughs> they had the turntables, everything. I gave it, I gave the turntables away, dog. I hope they were no 1200s. <laughs> they were. Don't shh. Oh, That's between us, but the world now. <laughs> wow. I that person said that. That, that. Well, now let's see how I felt for all those years doing that chapter. <laughs> wow. But yeah, I, I had to tell them, I had to share that story. They're probably watching this now, like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. You told me you gave him this stuff, gave him to the bookstore. I know I didn't. <laughs> you know, tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> you, you were doing charity work. Okay, I got you. I, yeah, that's what I was doing. That's what I was doing. It, it didn't affect nobody but, but the trash. You wanted people. to that. Much more that would be more fortunate for it. I understand. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> so, I mean, I when I tell you, I'm old school and I'm new school. So I was a '90s. My I had all three of my kids in the '90s. So my oldest just turned 32. Okay. And my son's 30, and my youngest is 26. So I did a little bit of both of the '70s, the '80s, and the '90s. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, in your because you now you are the manager of Jay Howe and you manage a lot of other great, amazing artists. Do you see the difference of the genre and the caliber of music back in the 70s up until now, the 2000s? In my opinion, and nothing is no shade against the new artists these days. Most of them sound like they're eating a microphone, and you can't understand nothing they say, and it's like that you had the same beat, just different words. Is well, yeah. that what you was you were seeing? I, I I agree with you, and I and I and I had to sometimes take a step back because I have to look back when I started hip hop. My mom then told me that wasn't real music. You know what I'm saying? Everybody saying that rap stuff. Quit playing that rap stuff. It, it didn't have anything. And so now I have to look at the new generation and, and let them have their time and their music and what they do. Even though I, I may not like a lot of it, like you said, I don't understand a lot of it. But it's all of a sudden, if you hear it enough and they play it enough, you'll like it. You know what I'm saying? After a while, you like, okay, I guess I can get with that. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, it's just, but but you, but I think, I think what it is, the music don't have the substance and the and, and the feelings that we could feel back in the day. When you hear a record or you're listening to a choir storm, you hear these records that touch your heart and make people cry and, 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 and that you can really relate to. You know what I'm saying? You really telling my age now? You talking about the choir storm, Lester? <laughs> Right. I used to fall asleep to that to that um every night at, on Pi 99 in yes. Philly. <laughs> Pi 99 and WDAS, the quiet storm. <laughs> right. So you're really telling my telling your age and my age. <laughs> yep. And even the rap stuff that came out in the early, they had messages to them. You know what I'm saying? Things that we can relate to. And right. now, you know, so you, you you don't you have certain records, and it's just it's like it's just a matter of uh, just a time, and everything I think comes back around. You start to see R and B start to pick up a little bit more and come back, and I think eventually. Okay, well, I have one. I have a I have a I have a, a question. You probably not ready. You probably haven't heard of Access before. Yeah. Give me your favorite five hip hop. Ready? Your favorite five hip hop, hip -hop records. Yes. How, I'm can, ready. how about can I just do artists? Don't matter. However you want to do it. Your choice. Okay. This your chef. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, uh, Rakim. 
okay? I got to get Tupac and Biggie, okay? Uh, one is artists I work out to his music every time in the gym is uh, uh, Ice Cube is one of mine. And then um, let me see who else I'm going to, and I got to go with HM. I got to give Scarface. <laughs> I mean, Scarface is cool, but you know, Rakim, my man, I promise you, he came to concert where I live in, in Charlotte, and I promise you, I was Brooklyn all day, I was New York all day, right. I, I think I was tired, but I was still woke, so you get your five, I like your five. Yeah, you know, my those, those my five. I got, I got to have. I had to throw a West Coast and I had to throw a Southern artist in there. I couldn't Ain't give nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at no, all. Man, people are thinking like I'm not H Town. I got, I still got to keep that H up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so you've always done hip hop, or what? 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 At what part of your your journey, your career, where you started doing a little bit of both? Because I've seen some of your artists have his hip hop, hip hop, only artists hip -hop that I and R and B. The only artist I have right now is Jay Howell for his, uh independent. The other artists that I work with are on the label for Rock Nation uh, that I work with right now. So, like, congratulations. I want to give a shout-out to Ombre. We just took her number one. You know, we got artists like Snow Allegra on there, and we got Kaylin for real. We got some uh, artists that are coming up. And one thing I do love about working over Rock Nation is, like, we're not just signed. They don't just sign artists because of streaming. They, they sign artists who they believe that think they may have a career. You know what I'm saying? So it's like building from the block. And so that's one reason why taking Ombre's record number one on the uh, R&B chart a few weeks ago was was very, um, I said, was 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 a good feeling for me because I took a lot of records number one, but to see this artist that we started off with from ground and worked that record for like eight months at radio and to get a number one, so that, that was success. But yes, when my career started, like I look when I, uh, when I left high school, I, I started off uh, at KTSU. Then I left KTSU and went and worked at a uh, commercial radio station, which was KISS 98.5, where uh, Steve Haig would hire me there. Then I went over to uh, 97.9 in the box. And then at that point in time, uh, Jay Prince of the rap a lot, who uh, uh, put, he's the one that put me in on the record side because he gave me a job. He told me that I'd be good at marketing and promotion, and he gave me a job. And uh, if it went for Jay Prince, it wouldn't be no Lester Pace. Yeah. And that's why your last name has a, a great acronym to it. You know, positive attitude, positive change. attitude changes everything. <laughs> and I'm that's gonna, my journey. I have to tell the story behind that one one day, but not on this because it, the way I got it. <laughs> well, don't worry because I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to bring you back. You ain't got to worry about that. I'm going to bring you back. So I have a slogan this year 2023 is all about me. And Lester, you are to me. You have a humble spirit. You, um, you give people chances. And a lot of artists, when they get, or a lot of managers or people who get up up to that S, upper echelon level, they forget about the little people. And right. um, my mom told me one time. She said, "You know, God said, don't diminish small beginnings." And I see that you said that with Rock Nation, you're giving other people chances. Who, if they would have went to another uh, record label or another record station or a manager, they wouldn't give them that opportunity. And I and I appreciate that about yeah, you. Well, I, well, I can't. I got to give that to uh, that that credit to uh, Sherry, Sherry, uh, my boss Sherry, and also Omar. They are. Uh, are the ones you know because I, I i'm just on the radio marketing side so what ends up happening once they sign an artist and we have these meetings every week and once we got a record that's showing some traction they'll bring us bring the record to me and my staff big d and resin and then we go to radio and we do our thing and stuff from there so that's what we do so but i love the fact that they give new artists and people who might not have the streams that most labels are looking for that opportunity and so the thing i like about doing my artist jay howe um I, what we've been able to work with him is we I use this slogan independent but major so mm -hmm. doing is uh that I'm trying to build with him is let him he may be independent but his look is going to look major you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Gonna look major like uh so and then what uh another thing that I love is that what we did we made him sign to himself so that way even for him and the producer uh we started a label JTP Justin Teray and Pace so what that what it does now, so nobody can say because I was managing him, that's a conflict of interest because he signed to himself and we all eat 33 and 3rd off the record side. And then on the management side too, I 
do the management side so help build them so because a lot of times you have a conflict with a manager and a label and the manager telling the label what he's not doing so now that so we don't have that discrepancy in what it's been able to do for him uh when i first uh started working with him he, he was working two jobs now i don't like to try to push it like this but now he, his streaming is doing so well that he's making between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars a month and so what I taught him to do something when I worked with Yo Gotti and, and which I learned this from Yo Gotti was he take his mostly show money and reinvest it back into the company so he can do his marketing and promotions. So I, that's just the way I think a lot of artists just start doing it. Uh, they, I have artists call me Dan, uh, uh, if you're gonna get a manager, get you a team. You can't do it without a team. If you don't have a team, then I don't think you're gonna make this business. I don't care how great you are. You gotta have a team. And then if you ain't got that investor, all your parties should come in and then you you know and build and then and, and see it come back and then if you get to a certain status where you build it now you can go get a major record label deal instead of going taking half a million or two million dollars and then a year or two is gone and now you will never see another check from the label because guess what people want to complain about the label but the label have sunk three four five million dollars into you <laughs> recoup that so people want all the label do this but guess what when you go out to uh flying in those uh, in, in, to all these places staying these hotels and doing all this thing all of that costs money mm -hmm. they, but the person's going to recoup and in any business you want to make three times of what you put out if i spend 100 i expect to get 350 or 400 thousand back okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Money that i spent so you know it's two sides everybody show the bad side of the labels and then the other people side of the other part but i think you should build something first for a label to have, and now you got something, and, and know that you're gonna make it. So that's the, be the beauty part that I do like being on, on the record side and being in this position, even at uh, Rock Nation right now. Wow, well, you you put out a, a good a great point um, when you said that the people at at your label at the at the label at the radio station, I mean the the label where you have a group of people, team people. So my 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 motto at my job is team work make a dream work. So you have that same motto. And I remember my mom before my dad passed, she said, your dad used to always say, God's going to always give you your people. So you you guys learn how to mold your artists and have their people. So then when they get ready to get to that level, you, you've already given them the, the blueprint, the footprint that they need for their own success. And exactly. you have a, a great business acumen. I mean, an amazing business acumen. Not many managers or people in your field think like that everybody's too busy taking 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 give me well, give me give me well exactly and that's the problem like i tell people i don't want see i know a lot of people have labels and every day the artists don't can't pay their rent they can't do say i always call me you got to pay i don't want to be nobody's daddy okay <laughs> i want you to be your own independent be able to stand on yourself and what i'm teaching my artists to do is like i tell jay all the time i say in three years you're gonna be pulling out that black card paying for everything you know what i'm saying so i want him to be a brand the brand is him at the end of the day we all are working for him you're not working for me we're working for you as we build you up to that success now you're on the, uh, getting him to understand the whole business side and, and the aspect of how to handle his own business wow well i'm not going to hold you much longer but i want you to share one thing with the world anything that you would like to share something motivating something positive something expiring because you know um you are such a wise young man beyond your years. I promise you, you are. And you're, you're sharing a lot with me, even in my new chapter, my new path of where I'm at right now in my own business um, life. Is there anything that you would like to share with the world that's, that would be something that they can take away and they say, you know what? Well, that's what they uh, said that. One thing I, t I, I uh, elaborate on is that I believe in health. I used to, I found out, you know, I used to think about, you know, everybody wants to be money. Everybody wants to have a success. But then I tell people, you go back and ask Steve Jobs from Apple, who's that who's dead now what would he take uh what would he take all the money and all the rich to have or his health and health is more important to me than any of those things so i'm i'm always pushing health as well and learning new things about um different things instead of going nothing against doctors and i don't want to knock to anybody or whatever you do but i believe that god put a uh, uh, the higher source put a, a lot of natural products out here for us to do things to take care of ourselves so um that's one of the things i'm a big uh, believer in and then um I never get another person ask me how do I uh, define success for myself for myself and I define success as helping other people become successful so it's not about me and I look at it now it's like I look around and I see people and they come up to me and say hey man thanks I mean if it weren't for you you put me to bed or you did this you did that so then that made me wake up and say okay God may not want me to have 
multi-million dollar stuff like that but how many people have i touched and helped change to make them be you know have a better life or even a career in the music industry or just a word of advice or even giving people some health tips for, uh, on, on some things so that's that's all i care about i don't i, I, I don't have to be in a religion i don't have to have anything to do because i know one thing conquers everything love love will conquer everything and whether your religion it is it is or that, or that, or that. so that's what i'm trying to do so my whole goal for me as i move forward in my life is just is just love love you know and, you know i snap every now and then and stuff but i have to always bring it back to love because i know that's the journey that i'm here having to so when i can have that even kill and just be still do all the turmoil wow man amazing awesome okay i'm gonna make this one joke and i know you probably heard this before anybody tell you look like damon dash yeah. <laughs> i was like is that his, his uncle his cousin you know <laughs> yeah I'm and i look at the pictures yeah. and i was like <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I've heard it. Yes, I. Heard it. I got. You, you say you're probably getting tired of it, huh? But, but I, I definitely respect him and what he's done in the culture, of this business. So yes, I've heard it before. So not. Wow. That, that, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? That that information you shared. I mean, love conquers all, as you said. Um, God is love, or I mean, whoever you believe in, whoever your higher higher power is. And we have so much things going on in this world. People forget that those four letters, you know, they think about those other letters, you know, but they never think about that. Those four letters, love, L-O-V-E, you know, right. that conquers everything and anything. Even when you're mad at somebody, as you said, you're not perfect. Neither am I. But what you're sharing with us and you know, I promise you, this is part of my new journey. I appreciate that. If nobody else appreciates it, I appreciate that. Um, you are you are an amazing young man. I definitely want to bring you back on my show again. If you have the time, I know you're such a busy man. I look forward to being on your show uh, soon. Right, right, right. I got you going on one of my radio stations, and I'll get you hooked up on the other one. And any way I can help you to be successful, I'm here for it, okay? I am grateful and thankful for that. I really, truly appreciate that. Well, guys, you heard it here. Let's the pace. My one-of-a-kind one extraordinary interview. When I tell you I'm a, I'm a testament of God's grace, this is what God's grace looks like. Because everyone's questioning, everybody's asking, how does this happen? It wasn't me. It wasn't him. It wasn't um, my producer. It was the man upstairs, the one and only. <laughs> Big G-O-D for me, for whoever believes in anything else. That's what I'm going to believe in all day, every day. Guys, thank you all for joining my show. Lester, again, thank you. I appreciate you taking out the time of your busy schedule. I know you got some fun to have and some more some more treat kits and nuggets to share with other wise, young, and old men. Because, you know, 50 years old, man, I'm, I'm at that door. I'm like, yo, I cannot believe I'm about to be 50. <laughs> Welcome to the club. We're glad you. I like my AARP card to come in the mail. Because <laughs> I got discounts to use. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time for joining my show. Again, y'all, this is Morgan Reese. Uh, welcome to my show. Good morning, Black people. Morgan Reese with my amazing guest, Lester Pace. Thank you for taking out the time. Guys, you have an amazing rest of your day. This is Thankful Thought for Thursday. I am so blessed to be here. I am so blessed to be alive. And to be able to see another year, 49 and a half, 55, oh, here I come. Hip hop. I promise you, I'll be jumping. I'll be, I'm going to take my ibuprofen first, you know, just in case. <laughs> all right. Airbnb and Rock him all day, paid in full. <laughs> hey, you, <laughs> Thank you guys again. Hey, we got a show coming up in Philadelphia with Jay House. You definitely come out. Oh, send me that information. I'll be there. <laughs> Man, look on his page. It's finally date. I got you covered, okay? I appreciate that, Lester. I appreciate it. Guys, thank you again for joining my show. Be blessed.